Hi everyone, I'm Rena Nine, and thank you for joining us. We begin with a live look at the East Room of the White House, where President Trump is expected to address the growing opioid crisis today. On the campaign trail, then candidate Trump vowed to make tackling the epidemic a top priority for his presidency. Now it's more than nine months in, he's expected to declare it a public health emergency. Jackie Alemany joins us now from the White House. Jackie, we know the president's going to declare this today. What can we expect and what exactly does this mean? That's right. So two months after President Trump first declared uh, uh, that he would call the opioid crisis a national emergency in August, the president is finally taking the steps to declare the crisis a, nation, a nationwide public health crisis. Trump at his event today will direct his acting HHS secretary to declare the public health crisis under the Public Services Health Act. This does not authorize any additional funding to the opioid crisis, but it does expand some access to medical services like telemedicine services, it directs a shifting of resources within an HIV AIDS grant program to those suffering from substance abuse disorder. And it also directs the Department of Labor to issue dislocated worker grants to those suffering from an opioid addiction with um, additional funding. So Jackie, why uh, is, isn't he actually declaring this a national emergency? Yeah, so, well, this is a symbolic first step declaring a nationwide public health crisis. I spoke with many advocates and experts this morning who said that this step does eliminate uh, red tape, but without more money, this really isn't enough. On a conference call with reporters this morning, um, White House officials argued that a public health emergency as opposed to a national emergency under the Stafford Act is of better use. Um, the Stafford Act has been employed, as you know, over the past few months with Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and Maria. It's typically used in uh, disaster situations and pulls from the disaster relief fund. And White House officials uh, and even advocates were skeptical about applying a national emergency to the opioid crisis simply because it's never been done before. But critics of President Trump say that the, under a public health crisis, he doesn't have uh, wide sweeping enough powers to really make the impact that this administration says they'd like to make. We're looking at a live look there at the East Room of the White House. I, I can actually see Governor uh, Chris Christie there of New Jersey. Looks like uh, uh, not too far there on the third row. You know, there were de there were some delays in this, Jackie, of actually declaring this. Why was it postponed? Yeah, it's unclear why this has been postponed. Um, I actually asked President Trump at a press conference last week what the holdup was, and he said that it was a very complicated legal process, a lot of agencies involved, a lot of different layers. We then asked Sarah Huckabee Sanders at a briefing following that, um, that press conference what the holdup was, and she said, again, there were uh, it was an interagency process and it was very complicated. But I've also spoken with former HHS Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, who said that there shouldn't have been a two-month holdup on this, that, yes, the pieces are complicated, but if, that, if, that if people are doing their jobs, this could have been declared rather quickly. There are also advocates on a state level who say that, you know, what's needed is already known, that the pieces to this, to declaring a national emergency are pretty clear and require additional funding. You know, things like uh, decreasing the price of naloxone, the overdosing saving drug that you can administer to those overdosing from an opioid, um, or even just opening up more treatment beds uh, and expanding access to Medicaid. So it's again unclear um, why this has taken President Trump two months to get to this point. Um, but I also, you know, on the other hand, spoke with HHS Secretary Mike Levitt, who said uh, at the end of the day, this is, a, this is a complicated process and those who say otherwise don't really know what they're talking about. And the initial budget, it called for actually cutting resources to the fight for the opioid crisis. Do we know where that actually stands now? Yeah, so this administration has been sending a lot of mixed messages um, in terms of uh, how they want to use the budget to combat the opioid crisis. Obviously, you have President Trump who talks a really compassionate big game about solving uh, the epidemic and dedicating resources towards the epidemic. But a lot of that rhetoric is overshadowed by a lot of um, policies that this administration has supported so far, um, like, the, for example, the repeal and replace uh, Health Care Act would have eliminated access to um, treatment. But due to public backlash, a lot of the proposed cuts actually hadn't made it through. But when it comes to actually securing funding for um, declaring a nationwide public health crisis, that funding uh, won't be able to 
be negotiated with Congress until the end of the year. Um, on a call with White House officials, they said that um, you know the additional funds could be authorized by Congress, but that they hadn't gotten there yet, uh, and that they were working on it for end of the year budget negotiations. But you know, Patrick Kennedy actually told CNN this morning that we don't need any more photo ops. Patrick Kennedy is a member of the um, president's uh, commission on combating the opioid crisis, and he said he's sick of the photo ops. And really, what's necessary for this is an additional two hundred billion dollars to be added on top of the existing budget. And on top of the money, Jackie, there are also several key positions in the administration that would actually be working on it, but they're actually unfulfilled at this point. Is the White House talking about those positions? Yes, they, they touched upon uh, this very large staffing gaps in key administrative posts this morning on a conference call with reporters. Uh, you know, as you all know, there's currently no um, Youth and Health, Health Services uh, Secretary. Tom Price resigned a few weeks ago. Um, the Office of National Drug Control and Policy uh, um, drug czar Tom Marino backed out after a pretty explosive 60 Minutes Washington Post. Um, uh, report that came out. So they are, they, they, a lot of key positions that would be driving the leadership in declaring a national emergency or a national public health crisis are missing. But on the call this morning, White House officials blamed Democrats for being obstructionist uh, and said that there are sub cabinet positions um, like a general counsel at HHS uh, or a chief executive officer that, that Democrats have been sitting on and refusing to confirm. If you're joining us now, this is a live look at the East Room of the White House where the president will be addressing the opioid crisis. He will be declaring a public health emergency. We're joined by Jackie Alemany from the CBS White House unit team. So Jackie, we know that the White House has been working with lawmakers to combat this crisis, but what exactly are they doing? Have they talked about any sort of concrete steps they're going to be taking? So the president did establish, one of the first things he did when he came into office was establish a commission on combating the opioid crisis. And this was, uh, this is chaired by Chris Christie, who's going to be at the event today. Uh, as you pointed out, Rena, I think you can see him sitting in the crowd. Um, and they're going to release a final report due November 1st on best practices and recommendations for the president to combat the opioid crisis that has killed 64,000 people in 2016 alone and is expected to exceed that number in 2017. Um, but most of the measures this White House has taken so far has been in the law enforcement realm. Um, the Federal Drug Administration is now imposing requirements on manufacturing the, on manufacturers of prescription drugs. Um, there, the DOJ is the Department of Justice is targeting uh, individuals who have contributed to the uh, opioid prescription epidemic. Um, but, uh, you know, critics say that there hasn't been enough done on the treatment side, which again requires funding. A former ONDC official told me this morning that there needs to be a more holistic approach uh, towards the crisis that's coordinated with Congress with funding. You're joining us now. We are awaiting the president's remarks addressing the opioid crisis. Jackie Alemany joins us now. Jackie, you go through those. You just ran through the list of things that, that lawmakers want to achieve uh, to help them make a difference in this crisis. But is there a sense of one particular thing or strategy that they feel would really make a dent and a difference in this struggle? Well, as you know, the president uh, talks himself about the wall. Um, you know, as often as possible. He truly believes that securing the southern border um, can really curb the opioid epidemic. Um, but, you know, this is a this is a, a supply and treatment issue, right? So um, these steps are necessary and, you know, Experts do give the Trump administration credit for uh, for attacking the problem from that aspect. Um, you know, the State Department has also secured a binding U.N. agreement, making it harder for criminals to access fentanyl. Um, so they also looked at the fentanyl aspect of this. That's the deadlier um, version of heroin that's been coming in from China. Um, so I, I, I do believe that this White House is trying to attack this from as many different um, angles as possible. But, you know, again, you have a, an OMB budget director who is a fiscal conservative who doesn't necessarily want to dedicate more resources to this epidemic. I, and you had Secretary Price himself actually say two days before President Trump first wanted, said he would declare a national emergency, that he didn't think that was necessary. So I think the players in this administration are on a few different playing fields here. Um, although today seems like a, a first step forward in um, unifying the approach. 
For those of you uh, who remember from the 80s, Nancy Reagan, the first lady, was very involved in the Just Say No campaign between, I think, 1984 and 87. They, the, the administration then pumped in $1.7 billion to that. Um, there were different takes on exactly how successful she was with that. But, Jackie, when you look at the president's strategy, do we know if he's going to be personally involved in this, or is this something that he believes he can delegate and have other people work on? That's actually really funny you say that because uh, last week when I was pressing a White House official on why this emergency declaration hasn't happened yet, he told me that quite frankly when Trump, when the president makes an order and asks for his administration to do something, they don't understand that they need to get that job done. Uh, you know, sort of deflecting the blame onto the uh, coordinating agencies for why they hadn't presented the president for what he had asked for. Um, but I do think that, I mean, this event today, the president himself, uh, we've been told by White House officials, is going to be speaking from his personal experience. We know that his brother, um, who has who passed away, struggled with substance abuse uh, issues. The president himself is going to be surrounded by those who have struggled with addiction at this event. Uh, and just last week, First Lady Melania Trump went to Lily's place um, to uh, host an event with babies who um, were born addicted to opioids. So I, I do think you see the first family uh, getting, you know, involved with this firsthand. And I think I do think you'll see a continuation of that. This event today is a perfect example. Um, but again, um, this administration hasn't quite matched their rhetoric yet uh, with legislative action. You know, during the campaign trail, he wanted to declare this a national emergency. Remind us again, Jackie, why he chose not to do that. So the administration officials told us this morning that it just made more sense uh, and it was a better use is the term that they used to declare a nationwide public health crisis as opposed to a national emergency. Um, we've only seen national emergency declarations when it comes to natural disasters, uh, which is a, you know, uh, a burst of time um, in a specific geographic location, which isn't what the opioid crisis is. It's a, it's a nationwide epidemic. But uh, critics do argue that a national um, emergency declaration could offer the president more wide sweeping powers, like, for example, with the power to lower the price of uh, naloxone, the um, overdose saving drug that, that costs far too much money in the U.S., according to. Uh, to a lot of advocates. Someone told me last week that in Ukraine, for example, um, naloxone costs uh, a dollar. Uh, and, and here that's not the case. Here the state governments have actually run out of their supply of Narcan and are, are really struggling to combat the epidemic themselves, uh, which is why they need the help from the federal government. Jackie Alemany at the White House, thank you so much for joining us, Jackie.